Welcome to Northwest Afternoon with Cindy Reinhardt, Dick Foley, and Elisa Jaffe. Hi, everybody. Welcome on this chilly, icy Monday. We've got a fascinating show today about the secret life of a leading model. But first, to help steer you around any icy conditions, mm -hmm. let's check in with Como's Lynn Espinosa for the latest on the first winter storm of the season. Lynn? out there. Today you're going to meet Tula, a top international cover girl who spent half her life struggling with a painful secret. The unmasking of that hidden truth destroyed the relationship she cherished most. As a child, Tula always knew she was different from the other kids. Well, you see, this glamorous, gorgeous female was in fact born a male. She knew right from the beginning nature had made a mistake, and today you'll hear how medical evidence, evidence proved her right. Plus, you are going to meet the man who fell in love with Tula and is preparing to become the father of her child. The whole story of Tula today. Really nice folks. Yeah, they are. See okay. you later. I'm ready. When you look at this woman, it's easy to see why she's an international model. But shockingly, she was born a he. Next, Tula and her new husband share how scientific evidence proved nature made a mistake with Tula and hear what they're now doing to make their family complete. Doors are open in 93 to the best of 94. The best of 94. It's Toyota's first sales event of the new model year. Their silver anniversary option package savings on Corolla. And a Toyota Touch lease that makes it easy to get into Corolla. A benchmark of quality in America for 25 years. Take advantage of our one price two or four door to sell DX with option package savings, either one, one price. The Best of 94 sales event makes November the best time to buy. The best time we could have made New Rapid Recall a game where you just shout out answers right away. Wonton, bubble hatchet. But that's too easy. We could have made New Rapid Recall so it wasn't a team game. Help me. But Help that's me. too hard. And we could have made it a game where time wasn't important. How many more do we need? But that's no fun. So we made New Rapid Recall the ultimate team game. You store the answers in your head, then work with your team to recall them in just 30 seconds. Hey, we could have made New Rapid Recall incredibly fun. And we did. A lot of champagne glasses have been used to prove how smooth a car can be at high speed. Surely, a toast is in order for a truck that can do the same. New Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. Take the ultimate test drive in the all-new Dodge Ram, only at your Northwest Dodge dealer. Come to Sears Grand Reopening. We've completed our remodeling to serve you even better. We have bigger apparel departments and more of the latest styles, so you can do some remodeling of your own. Come to Sears Grand Reopening. It's like a brand new store that already has all of your favorites. Sears. Save 25% on Mrs. Holiday sweaters and Mrs. Fleece Forward activewear during Sears Grand Reopening in Silverdale and the Everett Mall. Brango. Mmm, so creamy. I love them. Now in 11 flavors. 11? Wow. Mm. Only at the Bon Marche. Mm. You need help with your weight or your self-esteem, so you sign up for a workshop. They use fear, intimidation, and ridicule. They won't let you sleep. They won't let you eat. Tuesday on Northwest Afternoon, meet housewives who say they have been brainwashed by local self-improvement cults. Welcome back to Northwest Afternoon. To magazine readers around the world, our guest was viewed as a glamour girl. Her stunning features and fabulous figure landed her on the pages of Playboy, Vogue, and Cosmopolitan, just to name a few. But what people didn't see was the pain caused by a secret this international model planned to take to her grave. As a child, she was sad and confused, and she knew her looks were deceiving because while on the inside, Tula always knew she was a girl, she was actually born a boy. Please welcome Caroline Cossey, or as she is better known, Tula. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming. Take us back to those early days when we would all see your faces on the magazine covers, and yet, at that point, the secret was not out. What, what was that like? Was it like living a lie? Uh, well, I don't think there was any lie, no. Um, 
I just, I had a career that I did, um, and I was fortunate to sort of get into modeling. I think most girls like to sort of get into modeling, and I was one of the lucky ones, and, and I, I, my career was very successful. But exciting also? Um, same thing, yes. I sort of traveled the world, made lots of money, and I didn't sort of see that my past should have caught up with me, and if it did, it should have been the sort of my decision whether I sure. should have sort of come out with it openly. But what, was it your intent that it not catch up with you, actually? Oh, God, yes. yes. I mean, if we have a little sort of problem about ourselves, we, we try to keep it a secret, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I didn't think it was anyone's business what the problems I went through as a child. I was, as a model, you're taking on, you, you're, you're booked as face value. Sure. And uh, I didn't think it was anyone's problem, but the problems there, I had. There was some irony, then, in the, was it, was it Smirnoff Vodka? for which there was a photograph taken of you water skiing actually behind Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the caption read, uh, well, they said anything could happen. So when you read that caption, did it have any particular special meaning for you? No, the, the tabloids played that up after oh, did they? The, the exposure just sort of came out and what have you, but no, it was just a... For you, it wasn't a, a different kind no, of double entendre? No, it was just entendre. another job, actually. Mm -hmm. what, what about the fear of people finding out. What would you do to make sure that they didn't find out that you'd had a sex well, change operation? Did you do anything? I didn't do anything to sort of um, hide it, no. I mean, I, it was just a sort of a situation that didn't sort of arise. If anyone asked me point blank, I would say yes, mm -hmm. on a personal mm -hmm. level, but uh, in a public mm -hmm. manner, I didn't think it was anyone's business. So, so what's extremely interesting, though, is that you posed in Playboy before it was even divulged. That's right. Yes. And Playboy, known for, you know, focusing on glamorous women, never showing transsexuals. Right. That must have been, was it funny to you that, that you... No, it's never been funny. You mm -hmm. know, people sort of say, well, you're sort of conned, and, you know, that's what sort of made me re sort of feel that I wanted to do my book, because it's never been a situation where I've sort of, like, been conning everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my life and the problems I've had, and that's why I did my book. But uh, when I did Playboy, it was, you know, just another job. I'd sort of been, you know, doing various campaigns and pin-ups and what have you, and Playboy came along and I did that. But I did it many years later for the cause and my fight, mm -hmm. which is to sort of show the world that transsexuals can be attractive, can be sexy, and we don't look like men in drag. Mm -hmm. We should tell our viewers, too, we just showed a cover of your book, and I know it's not available, uh, at least at this point in the United States, or one oh, of them is no, not. It, yes, no, it, um, yes, it's well, in paperback both? now. My story, Faber and Faber, is now in paperback here. Okay, so people could find it if they went looking for it. Oh, yes. Let's hope so. <laughs> now, I, under I understand your modeling even led to film work. You were one of the James Bond girls? That's right, yes. Well, what kind of role did you have? Well, if you see the movie, as long as you don't blink, you'll... Uh, <laughs> you'll <see laughs> For your it. eyes only? <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. um, yes, I got... Um, it You're was in the far left here? Yes. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, um, I had I had a successful career for seven years, and in the last part of that four years, I was hounded by the tabloids um, after I was a, a hostess on one of the quiz shows, and I went to Australia. I just wanted to get away from it, and my agent said, um, you know, it's probably the right thing. And I came back when everything had quietened down, and she said, if anything was going to be printed, it would have been printed by now. Why, why uh, were they hounding you, do you think? Well, because of my past, you know, it was sort did, of did like they know? suspected. Oh, no, they, they suspected. I didn't. I'd never admitted it. I guess I, I wonder why did they suspect it in the first place? Somebody that I'm looking at you, I wouldn't suspect that. <laughs> Thank you, but um, no, I had I shared a dressing room with a girlfriend who had in the show that I was doing. I was a hostess on one of the quiz shows, bringing on prizes and what have you, and he, her boyfriend, had known me sort of uh, six, seven years prior when I was a showgirl, and he wanted to do some shots of me and sort of say, well, this is, you know, sort of, like we've fooled everybody, this is uh, not mm. really what you see. Mm. But I didn't want any part of that. Because when you were a showgirl, you hadn't had the complete uh, transformation yet. You, you, st you had, what, breast implants? That's right. And, but that was the extent of it. So you were still head male well, genitalia. That's right, but I was booked pu purely on my physical attributes, mm -hmm. you know, so I was female but uh, had male genitalia, and, and to me that was my problem that I had to sort out. But uh, this person from the past came back and thought it was me that he remembered a few years prior, and it sort of triggered off the press. So I was sort of like hounded, and they sort of looked in the background. And Was it in the headlines? Me. How did you find out that the press knew? 
how did I find out the Did you look down at a paper one day and it says... Oh yes, after four years of being hounded, when I finally mm. came back from Australia, my agent said, you know, don't worry, if they would have knew 100%, they would have printed it by now. And then this job with the Bond um, uh, film came up and I went along and was quite confident that if anything was going to come out, it would have. And I did the Bond film as one of the James Bond girls and sadly, a short time after that, um, as I understand, you know, the press paid mm -hmm. for access to medical files at the hospital where I had my surgery and they, they sort of uh, got confirmation, so they were able to print it. What, and I was devastated. What was the impact on you emotionally when, when that was printed? I was devastated. You know, it's not something, I mean, now I'm sort of open and discuss it because I feel I'm sort of helping other people in my position. Uh, because there's so much ignorance involved in this whole subject, but uh, I was devastated. How about the impact on your career at that point? Well, it sort of took off, uh, you know, it sort of took off in a freak, you know, element. Um, mm -hmm. You know, everybody wanted to suddenly book me for the aspect that I was suddenly a transsexual. And you felt like they looked at you like you were a freak so show, it was one a woman freak show. Yes, yeah, so I had a very good age and that sort of uh, filtered the work and what have you, mm -hmm. but... Um, we're going to take a short break right here. And up, up next is a child. Tula would lie in her bed and she would wish that she'd been born a female. When we come back, we'll hear how medical tests prove that Tula was actually right and prove that she was right all along. And we'll also hear about how her family reacted to her life-changing decision. We'll be right back. Wedded bliss could be over. All we have left are two NyQuil liquid caps and these other pills. <coughs> you take the liquid caps. You've got a big day tomorrow. <laughs> Why should you suffer? I'll take these. But then you could still be up tonight with a sore throat and a cough, and you need the rest more than me. I insist. The power of liquid medicine the way you want it. Vicks NyQuil liquid caps. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy, head fever so you can rest medicine. I just hope my coughing doesn't keep you awake, riddled with guilt. <coughs> While half and half tastes great, it has its share of cholesterol and saturated fat. Fortunately, there's Mocha Mix, non-dairy creamer. All the rich, creamy taste of half and half, but no cholesterol. And low in saturated fat. And the newest Mocha Mix is fat-free. You can't get any lower than that. Now, if one of the makers of half and half stumbled on that fact, you can imagine how they'd react. Mix it up with Mocha Mix, the smarter way to cream your coffee. Original, light, and fat-free. I think men and women should share household chores, don't you? I cook, and my husband, Bill, does the dishes. He's terrific at it. He always scrapes the plates, and he never, ever overloads. No matter who does the dishes, Cascade does the dirty work. Other leading brands can leave spots so your dishes look dirty. Cascade with sheeting action gets them so clean they're virtually spotless. Perfect! Mm, just like you, my little... This mother had her two babies taken from her 32 years ago. She has been looking for them ever since. She thought her husband sold them. Wednesday on Northwest Afternoon, find out what really happened as we reunite this mother and father with their two lost daughters and introduce them to the siblings they never knew. Our guest is Tula, trying to share with us a very complex and emotional life story in just uh, a little less than half an hour or so today. We're, we're doing our best. Jetta, <laughs> Jetta in the audience has a question. Go ahead. Hi, yes. I was wondering, during like the early years when you were going through the therapy and all that stuff before you were totally complete, when you felt like discouraged and wanting to just, like, give it up, how did you overcome that? Um, 
getting to the point where I suddenly knew after doing therapy that you know there was only one avenue for me and that was surgery I mean I, was, I just couldn't wait for that point in time so I was never discouraged I mean all the little problems that I had during that time I mean I was working and you know sort of you no know, uh, private life sort of existed because I couldn't sort of go into any kind of relationship but uh, you know, the, just the fact that I knew that was going to be an end result and that there was, you know, surgery available, that kept me motivated. Had the surgery not been available, had the kind of change that you have now made simply not been a possibility, how I, would you have viewed the future? Well, I don't think there would have been one, actually. I think I would have killed myself. And fortunately, you know, in the 20th century now, there are, you know, there is help readily available for transsexuals that we are. We are given a chance to sort of live our lives complete. That's how, pretty how, how insightful, you, though, though. Yeah. as to how much pain you were going through. When you say, I would have ended my own life if I had to keep living it as a, a man on the exterior and a woman on the interior. Exactly. Is well, this like the, all your childhood? Were you feeling this kind of painful existence? Um, well, I, I think I was just confused as a child. I was being brainwashed into a way of life that was, that, that was totally alien to me. So I didn't really know. It was only when I sort of was more aware that I was aware that I weren't happy in the role of being a boy. So you're hanging out, you've got your brother, your older brother, and your younger sister, and, and who do you identify with growing up as a little kid? More so with my sister. So did you have, a, I understand, a little secret pact with her and you would do things with her that you wouldn't do with your brother? That's right. We sort of played dollies and things and what have you. But uh, yes, I mean, I just, I was totally confused. You know, having sex lessons at school, it was sort of like alien. I just knew I just couldn't go up that avenue. And I thought, oh God, what's wrong with me? I must be gay. You mm -hmm. know, at that point it wasn't gay. It was sort of queer and a horrendous word. But, but of course, um, at that age, you didn't know. No, I, and, didn't. And of course I just knew I didn't fit in right. with the male role and also anatomically I wasn't female, so mm -hmm. that was, what was I? What was it like for your father? He, here he had a son uh, mm -hmm. that, that he had christened Barry. Uh, w was there resistance on your part to sort of go along with some of the male-oriented games? Sure, all along. Games and my father, my uncle, and you know, my uncle used to sort of say, well, you've got to watch him, he's going to grow up peculiar because I was sort of mm -hmm. very different from my mm -hmm. brother. And, you know, sort of wimpy and pansyish and all the awful expressions one uses. Right. What about the day you came home and said, Mom and Dad, I'm going to now become your daughter. I'm well, going to have a sex change operation. It yes, it didn't sort of happen like, you know, in two minutes. I, I left home to find myself, and, and I did, and I went home and explained. And my childhood fitted sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, basically. and. My father was a little confused. He needed to read a little bit about, you know, what a transsexual is all about, and then. But was he open to it immediately, or what was no. his, his I mean, instant reaction? Was what? Like most men, I mean, you know, you're you're a family man. I mean, how would you feel if your so-called so son it, it came would home take and some said? Adjustment. But then again, if your son was somewhat different from another son of yours, mm -hmm. you'd know that there was something wrong with your son and seeing them suddenly explaining why and this was a route I needed to take to, to feel complete and happy, mm -hmm. you'd be supportive, I'm sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was your mom pretty emotional, I'll bet. Yes, I mean she was, you know, concerned and all the pain and problems that I would endure but uh, I mean I, I feel, you know, unlike a lot of transsexuals, why I've sort of kept balanced and been able to sort of fight for the cause, as I, I've put it, um, for as long as I have, is because I've had that support. And mm -hmm. I'm, sadly, there's so much ignorance involved. That's and right. Uh, and you're still fighting. Yes. I mean, the battle isn't won yet. Let's yes. take a phone call. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hi. I was wondering if um, she's satisfied with the results. I, I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question? I was wondering if she's satisfied with the results. Oh, are you happy with the results uh, of... Who you are now. Of who, who you, you are. Become? as a result of all um, the turmoil. Well, I've always been the same person, you know, it's just, you know, sort of getting my mind and body as one. Right. Um, so there was never any sort of end result. Um, <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm sort of complete now and I'm happy, happily married. Tell us, tell us about the, the testing that was done just in terms of, of chromosomal makeup, though, and what you learned then um, ab about yourself. Yes, during the course of the um, therapy that I had, I had a chromosomal count and, and hormonal, and it was discovered that I was three X's and a Y. Mm. And 
which means normally women are an X and a Y, y. an X, two, two, women two are two X's. X's and men are an X and a Y, so you had three, three X's, X's and, and y. Y's. Which is sort of, I think they call it medically mosaic, which is a sort of, you know, there's, I think it's 42 or something. So was this a relief to see this, like, oh my gosh, nature um, did mess up a little bit with me. I, I am In really a way, yes, but I, I knew that I was different, so when you feel that you're different, it sort of confirms the way you feel, but it's not down to sort of like, oh, you know, is it in black and white that I'm mm -hmm. different? I mean, it certainly helped me adjust mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, in, in cases where it's not chromosomal, it's certainly hormonal. One of, the, one of the warmest passages or parts of the story that I remember reading was the time that you had now become in every way physically a woman and went back for a kind of reunion with your mom and dad and, and were really welcomed quite nicely and warmly, I thought. Yes. How did that feel for you? Um, well, uh, that's why I said, you know, I, you know, that's helped me keep me going and, and feel totally motivated to keep. Tell, the tell us how your father there. reacted. Did he come down a flight of stairs to see you? Yes. And he did, and he gave me a big kiss and cuddle, and said, "You're a beautiful daughter, and I'm very proud of you." And I mean, it wasn't sort of like an overnight adjustment. Right. I mean, in this, you know, mm -hmm. it's very hard to discuss, you know, how the whole period, you know, went in sort of a few minutes. But um, I mean, he was great. And I'm very proud to have, you know, the support of my mom and dad and sister and brother and, as it's turned out, all my relatives. I mean, it's great. Oh, I mean, I just wish more, you know, there's more people understanding of the subject of, you mm -hmm. know, transsexuals. And, and maybe and with your work, Tula, there will be more people. Well, let's hope so. We'll take another short pause. Still ahead today, we'll hear how Tula's secret was uh, finally unveiled and how the truth shattered her first marriage. But there's a new man now at Tula's life, and when we come back, you will meet her new husband, David. Stay with us. It's even better than we expected. That's what we say every year about the Wonderland of Christmas at White's in Linwood. Step into White's spectacular world of holiday traditions and festivities. Designer trees and handcrafted ornaments, glittering gift ideas for everyone on your list, holiday music, refreshments, plus beautiful Christmas treats for your home in all sizes and varieties. A magical world for this special season. The event of the year is here. The Wonderland of Christmas at White's in Linwood, 50th and 196th. Going, 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 Dark going, going, cold. Going, 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 Presenting going, Scotty's family size. Not, not my lips. <laughs> <going, going, laughs> this movie is so sad. <laughs> With more tissues for about the same price as the other leading brands, Scotty's family size I gotta sneeze. <laughs> is the best tissue value go. Thanks. going. <laughs> the great taste of Skippy peanut butter. Cause great taste takes time. Skippy peanuts are slowly roasted, ground hot, and sealed warm for a great fresh roasted taste. You can't hurry love, no, you just have to wait. Skippy, great taste takes time. Last year, I put up so many lights, I thought airplanes would mistake the roof for landing strip. This year, I draw the line. Target makes holiday decorating even more fun with Mickey's Clock Shop from Mr. Christmas. Mickey and his friends sing 21 different carols for hours of enjoyment at Target, now just $59.99. Last year, I thought we had a few bare spots, but 2,000 more of these should do the trick, right, honey? It's a wonderful life. You still have time to vote in our telepoll. Let us know what you think of Dorian. Do you sympathize with Dorian? Think she got off easy? Or is her treatment too harsh? Just call the number on your screen and we'll have the results at the end of the show. Welcome back. Tula's gender adjustment might scare off a lot of men, but not this guy. Eleven years her junior, David fell in love with everything about Tula. Enough so that he wanted her hand in marriage. Please welcome Tula's husband, David Fitch. <laughs> Thanks for coming here today. It's a nice story of how the two of you met, too. Tell us about that, your first meeting. That was, um, I never believed in destiny. And um, that was a, 
a quick lesson in, in, in believing that destiny is certainly possible because of the, the circumstances. I was, I was in London, passing through London after traveling around Europe for five months. And uh, Caroline was in, well, she lived in London, but she was at a shopping mall at a restaurant that she hardly frequented. And I was, I s stayed on a bus further than I should have. I was just passing through London, hitchhiking through. And uh, I got off this bus two miles too far down the road. And I came across a shopping mall and decided I was going to stop for lunch before I was on the road again. And, and uh, that's where you saw her? And yeah, that's where I saw her. And uh, <laughs> I mean, five minutes earlier and five minutes later, we, we wouldn't have, uh, the circumstances wouldn't have been the same. And we wouldn't have met. But you said you wanted to see her again. And she said, Oh, she, um, she said to, um, <laughs> she said, well, I've, I've written a book and maybe you should read that book and you might not want to call me back. And so the first thing that went through my mind was, why would I not want to call you back? And, and I said as much and she said, well, just go read my book. And I oh. said, you know, what is it about? No, just go read it. Do you just think I'm never going to see this guy again? Yes. You know, being transsexual, you're sort of, it's sort of inbred, you get rejection. Mm -hmm. had, you so had you faced that before? Oh yes, especially a lot? You know, I'd been married before and mm -hmm. it, sadly it only lasted three weeks and I'd had rejection. And, that and had you moment. felt love at first sight when you saw David? Oh yes. I mean, <laughs> was, uh, so to feel love and then to feel like you're going to set yourself up reje for rejection. That's well exactly, that's why tough. I sort of said to him, you know, he sort of said I'd like to see you again and I said well you need to read my book. What's it, what is it about? And I said, well, you just, I, it was very hard to sort of say, well, right. <laughs> by the way, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you're reading the book, mm -hmm. and what happens well, for the, you? It, I couldn't find the book. I was uh, visiting my grandmother in England up in Coventry, and uh, it's a small village, and, and uh, I, I, they didn't have the book. And I called her and said, I haven't found your book. Can you fill me in? She said, no, you keep looking, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I went to a few villages and I found it. And, uh, and your reaction? Well, before I even started reading it, you know, I was, you know, I, I sort of tried to suss out what was, what was, it, what it was all about. And uh, it was, there was a, there was a lot of denial. You know, no, no, this, this isn't true. This isn't, this can't be possible. This can't be the same person. What's going on? A lot Did of, it make you almost not want to call her again? No, that the the unusual thing about it was, um, I think we're all pretty much, um, you know, we're all influenced by society, and we all try and stay within the norm of society, and uh, and all of that was telling me that it, uh, was giving me my denial, mm -hmm. but my feelings coming out were, no, I still want to call this woman. And and then, and then there was the word you yourself mentioned, and that was destiny. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I had to call this woman back, and I never thought she was in love with me anyway, so I, I never expected anything like this. Anything We've got a phone call for you. Let's okay. go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say to Tula, you are beautiful, and what you feel inside is, is more important than what you look like on the outside and I have to commend your husband because for you to stand beside her and to hold her hand and say I love you for who you are and not what you were born as you know I can only just stand up and just clap you you two are both beautiful that's a nice call. nice to say thank, caller. You, thank you very much you know this must be such a, a wonderful switch for you too especially after your first marriage you were married exactly. to a wealthy man mm -hmm. tell us a little more about him um, well, I wouldn't call him a man, actually. You know, the fact that uh, I call him a mummy's boy because, uh, mm. you know, the fact that uh, his mum sort of demanded and commanded this, so he sort of just sort of dumped me, basically, and I never got a chance to sort of have a one-to-one, -one, and I had to deal with the fact that I had to deal with the lawyers. Well, th his parents did have one problem with you, and, and that problem was what, early on? Well, Elias was Jewish, and I had to go through a year of conversion, and the fact that I was Christian, they had a hard time dealing with that. So, so imagine if they had a hard time dealing with that. We just couldn't tell them that I was <laughs> transsexual. <laughs> so, so how did they find out? Uh, we went on a honeymoon. We had a fabulous marriage and, and went on a honeymoon, came back, and the day that we came back, it was, you know, front page in News of the World, which was uh, our 
tabloid, mm -hmm. and um, he was summoned home. And his I, parents said, "Get home. Wait, I, we need to discuss this." Uh -huh. And I just couldn't face his mum because we just, you know, we'd only met three months, and, uh, and that's that's where different. the rejection came from. Really, was his, was his family. Yes, I mean, it, uh, she, he was summoned home, and, and I was just given my marching orders, basically. He just disappeared from your life? Yes. Uh, no How did way. your family handle it, David? It, it was, uh, I, I was 90% sure that my family was going to be really good about it, because mm -hmm. my family's always been understanding, they're very open-minded people, and they just always wanted the best for me. But the 10% doubt was just the fear of, what if, what if, what mm -hmm. if this is not another repeat scenario? But you've it's just going to make not, things very right? difficult. Um, well, it was uh, interesting because my um, my mom was so you know, proud that I'd met this woman that I was really in love with, and of course she went out with pictures that I had of Caroline and took them around to her friends, and these friends said, "That looks like Tula." And you know, oh, and that's how cetera, she heard before you got a chance to tell her. Yeah, well, they they didn't oh. want to drop the bomb on her, so they they said, <laughs> <laughs> "I think I've seen her on TV," and and they just, you know, they just started the ball rolling <laughs> without taking the blame. And she came home and said, "You know, what's uh, has Caroline been on TV?" And I said, "Well, this, I thought this is a better time, no better time than ever to to break mm -hmm. out the scotch and um, and sit down and have a <laughs> and talk." It's still accepting. We've got to pause for a moment. We'll oh. we'll get back on this. When we come back, while David's family warmly embraced Tula, now David and his bride want to start a family of their own. How will they do that? Find out right after this break. It's the time for coming home. It's the time to share. It's the time to relax with family and the best of friends and to be grateful for all we have. For over 60 years, Safeway has helped the Northwest set the table for this celebration we call Thanksgiving. And for that, we are truly thankful. Happy Thanksgiving from Safeway. They've got the moves. They've got the style. Uh -oh. In the movie critics call loads of fun for the whole family. Take one and all. The Three Musketeers rated PG and playing separately. It's the year's runaway comedy hit. Oh, thanks, Coach. Cool Runnings rated PG and also playing separately. Take a journey into the bizarre with the film critics have declared history-making movie magic. Eureka! Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas rated PG. The Just for Fun Foundation is hosting their 6th Annual Christmas Charity Ball on December 3rd. Proceeds will bring Christmas to children in our emergency shelter receiving homes here in the Northwest. games and then there's Pictionary. Pictionary. It'll bring down the house. Year after the birth of my second child, this lady patted me on the stomach and said, oh, when is the blessed event? That was what sent me to Jenny Craig. I found the Jenny Craig cuisine so convenient. It taught me what a healthy portion is. When you're halfway to Gaul on Jenny Craig, you gradually start cooking your own food and it's such an easy transition. Now it's like, oh, it's so simple, but now it finally makes sense. Join now and lose 10 pounds free. And for every new program, we'll donate $10 to Race for the Cure. Call Jenny Craig. Have you taken some drastic action to save your child from harm? Have you risked your own life or even pushed the limits of the law for the sake of your child's safety? We want to hear your story. Call 421-LIVE immediately following our show. Lives with us today, her husband David Finch. How long have the two of you been married? Just over uh, a year. Yeah. Oh, do, you want, do you want exact days? <laughs> no, it doesn't no, matter. Just, okay. just over a year. <laughs> even our audience has a question. Go ahead, Eve. Well, first of all, I want to say you look even more beautiful in person than you do on television. I've seen you on several talk shows. Oh, thank you. And I, I want to also commend you on how well you explain the whole 
transsexual transition and issues. You do it very well. I've never heard any other one explain it as well as you do. The question I have is, are you still planning on having a child through your sister? Yes, we're still settling. You know, I left England and, and I've settled here in the States and it's taken us a little longer to get settled in Atlanta than we anticipated. But uh, yes, my sister is willing and David spoke to Pam um, about that aspect. So your sister will be the surrogate mother? That's right. So That must be very exciting for the two of you. Yeah. It is, yeah, because it's it's the closest thing to rectify a situation that we have no control over. Mm -hmm. And that way it's, it's nice that, um, you know, it's the same genes. Was that a difficult decision for mm -hmm. Pam, do you think? I don't think so. We've always been very close. And, you? you know, when we've done shows and things, she's always said, you know, it's part of herself that she's lending to, to me to make me feel complete. And I think I would do the same for her. We're that close. Do a so. lot of people assume that you're a homosexual? <laughs> <laughs> do, yes, do they? Do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, and what's your response? I really, I'm, well, my response is no, I'm not. Um, it's, it's, it's not a de uh, denial sort of thing. If I was homosexual, I certainly mm -hmm. wouldn't be ashamed of it. Right. Um, it's just not the way I, I was made or the way I feel. Um, it's, it's sad that, that I, I am interpreted that way by a lot of people because um, that's just their ignorance towards what's really going on and and it's a uh, it's a slight against transgenderists and 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 to gay people themselves mm -hmm. Marion in the quest in the audience go ahead um, I heard that there was going to be a movie to be made about your life and I was wondering if you knew anything more about that it's still being negotiated actually um, so I'm not quite sure I know my agent is discussing that with somebody in Hollywood and as long as I've got sort of certain control I just don't want to see this subject like I never wanted to see it exploited in a I wanted to be done in a sort of an educational manner than a sort of uh, you know titillating mm -hmm. um, sort of shock kind of. Tell us in just the minute we have left I know you're working and have worked for a number of years to try to change the laws in England where they are much right. more restrictive than here mm -hmm. if you lived in in the UK now what rights would you not have that you enjoy presently in the States and in Canada? Um, just the fact I'm legally married and, and I live very comfortably and, and the fact that if I was ever sort of like probed or whatever um, as a woman here I would have certain rights to be able mm -hmm. to sue someone. In England can you change your ge your uh, gender on your birth certificate? No. So if you yes. got in trouble with the law you'd go to a men's prison? That's right I'm still technically and legally a male it's all to do with the church, you know, it's mm -hmm. a sort of outdated laws. I mean, I can't marry anybody at all. I don't think the church has had a good look at you. <laughs> 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 Tula, we thank you very much for visiting with us in Seattle. It's nice to meet you in person after uh, reading and, and seeing so much about you on television. Thank you. It's Congratulations to the two of you Thanks, on your marriage. Awesome. We look you. forward to news of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be right back after this break.